Well hey everyone and welcome to another Mosaic Online. Can you believe that we are in August already? And not only that, this is actually our 20th week of doing church services in this format together. 20 weeks! And whilst we can't wait to have everyone back together in person, I'm really grateful that we've got this one way of staying connected together in these challenging days. So before we jump into our usual mix of worship and stories and word today, I just want to start with a bit of time and reflection based on some verses from Galatians. Galatians is a fantastic book and it's the source of our summer teaching series at the moment. And you know there's often so much noise and bustle in our lives that it's good sometimes just to pause, take a deep breath and partake of the peace and the grace that we have in our Saviour Jesus. See when we know the truth, it's the truth that sets us free. So the words are going to appear on the screen and I just want you to read the verses reflect on how our God is shaping us and moulding us to become like Jesus. Why? Because he loves us so much. And then after you've read that and been encouraged, we'll join Scott and the team for a time of worship. Not against us, not against us. 
Mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I 
worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. It's wonderful to worship God together, isn't it? 
You know, at the start of Galatians, Paul greets the church with two words that mean so much to us as believers. He says grace and peace. And we need grace. We need God's unmerited favour, not earned by following rules that we could ever keep in our own strength. We need grace today. We also need peace. We need that sense that all's going to be okay, no matter what circumstances we're facing because of Jesus. We're going to be okay. Grace and peace to all of you today. Well, at 12 o'clock, our Mosaic Kids team are going to be back with worship, stories and a craft for the kids and some of the adults to engage with. Bruce and his sidekick, That Looks Tricky Rick, are going to be bringing us Mosaic Kids news. And you've got to tune in for Bonnie, who's going to update us on the weather. Otherwise, how on earth are you going to know what to wear when you go outside? And until that time at 12, here's a brief update from Across the Life of Mosaic. And we've got some pictures and, uh, from the wedding last weekend of Jason and Judy, which was really special, despite not being able to have everybody there. Uh, with less people, there's a little bit more food for me and Wes to enjoy. And it was just a beautiful, fantastic day. Enjoy. Hi everyone, just to let you know, we'll be pausing Mosaic at six, just for August. But don't worry, because we will be back in September. We have some big and amazing plans and we cannot wait to relaunch in September. So please keep tuned and follow us on Mosaic at six on our Instagram for all the updates. This is the part of the service where you have an opportunity to give out of your financial means back to God and into the things that he's doing. When we give to God, we do it with a grateful heart. Every single morning when I'm walking the dog, I find myself thanking God uh, for the forgiveness that he's given me when Jesus uh, died on the cross. I thank God for the fact he's with me every single day with the Holy Spirit. You know, I thank God at mealtimes with my family when we sit down to eat and we say, God, thank you for my food. And we find ourselves thanking God at the end of a day when we're saying thank you for my house and thank you for my car, thank you for my jobs, thank you for my health and the health of those around me. And we also find ourselves thanking God for the things that go on through the church at the Hope Centre and even the services that we're having here today. We thank God for them. And so it is with a thankful heart that we give back to God to invest in the things that he's already doing. So if you would like to give, and there is no obligation to give at this time, but if you would like to give, please follow the links on the screen and let's sow and invest with a grateful heart and invest in what God is doing in the church. Thank you very much. Well, last weekend we started our new series called Growing with Galatians. And if you haven't had a chance yet to go and listen to Mark Jarvis, please make sure you go back and have a listen right after the service. It's a fantastic message about going back to our roots and also, if you haven't yet started to read the book of Galatians for yourself, there's some incredible truths for you to unpack. So it's just six chapters. Go and check it out in the Bible today. Now here's the one and only Dan Anderson sharing on Galatians chapter two. Over to the Hope Centre for Dan. Morning, guys. Daniel Anderson and I am one of the youth pastors here at Mosaic Church. And today I'm going to be delving into Galatians chapter 2 and I'm calling this freedom from the law and freedom 
in Jesus Christ. When I say the law, um, at the time, the Jewish people lived by the law and they believed that the law was what made them justified in God's eyes and made them righteous um, before God as well. Um, just a quick one. Have you ever had to unlearn something? So imagine for years you've lived by a set of rules, regulations, doctrines and um, theories, for want of a better term, and then someone comes along and says, you know what? After all those years of learning that, that's actually not the way we should be doing it. I've got, a, I've got a suggestion, and it is this man, Jesus Christ. That is what's going to justify us. So that's what the Jewish leaders of the time had to come against. Um, I want to pose a question as well. What does it mean to live empowered by God's spirit with the good news of Jesus Christ at the center, the core of our lives? Galatians 2, Paul communicates to us that man is not justified by the law, but rather by his faith in Jesus Christ. So as we can see already, it's the total opposite of what the Jewish leaders were living their lives by. They were justifying themselves through the law, but Paul comes along and says it's through Jesus Christ. And it is Jesus who justifies people and he will do it according to our faith. Paul also says at the end of Galatians 2, if righteousness could be obtained by the law, then it means that Christ died for absolutely nothing. At the beginning of Galatians 2, we see Paul returning to Jerusalem again after 14 years. In, in verse 2, it also says that he returned as a response to a revelation. Now, I think it's important to understand what revelation means. And I'm not talking about the book Revelations. I'm talking about the term revelation. And there are different schools of thoughts around it, but I've kind of um, got a, a bit of a summary based on the context of Galatians 2. And this is, what it, this is what I've come up with. The divine or supernatural disclosure to humans of something relating to human existence. The process by which God reveals knowledge of himself, his kingdom, his son, his will, and his divine providence. So we know that Paul didn't come to Jerusalem to show off and talk about his newfound knowledge and flaunt his, how intellectual he was. Paul actually came because God revealed some key things to him for a certain group of people, which were the people who were living by the law, because Paul believed that they were living in a particular way that was problematic and contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul thought that their teaching was leading people to miss the point of why Jesus Christ actually came. Salvation we're talking about. So we get a glimpse of why Christ came in Luke 4 verse 18 when Christ picks up the scroll of Isaiah and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released that the blind will see and the oppressed will also be set free. I think Paul's having this ongoing battle in, in Galatians and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ versus the law. In verse four, Paul mentions that part of the reason why he actually came to Jerusalem was because some false believers infiltrated their ranks, their camp, to spy on the freedom that they were having in Jesus Christ. So you can almost imagine that um, these law-abiding believers, false believers, as Paul puts it, um, were looking at Paul and his followers and saying, hold on a minute, how come these guys are so relaxed and free and, and happy and liberated in their peace? And here we are upholding the law, traditions, customs, circumcisions, and there they are just at free and peace in the liberty of Jesus Christ. And in verse 4, Paul actually likens the law to slavery. In verse 5, he says that we did not give those false believers any moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you and for us here in 2020. I believe that the message that Paul was bringing at this time was one of freedom, truth, love, relationship with Jesus Christ, and liberty as well. The Jewish people of the time, I suppose, were, they were really struggling with 
um, that understanding of how they bring their Jewish roots in terms of the law and align this with, well, align it with Paul's newfound um, understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ post the, the death and resurrection of Christ. But what does that mean for us as Christians living in 2020? Because we have a set of laws that govern this land, that the governance of the United Kingdom keeps things in check for society. And maybe not all of us kind of agree with how the government runs the UK, but as Christians, we believe that we abide by the laws of the land. That's part of our journey. So not, I'm not saying that we should abandon the law, not pay taxes, proper every want or speed. I'm not saying that and then say, oh, because Jesus Christ died, that we should we don't have to do that anymore. No, pay your taxes, park where's appropriate, and do not speed. I suppose what I'm suggesting is, how do we apply the gospel of Jesus Christ into our lives in order to bring people closer to the truth? What is that truth, you may ask, Dan? Well, in the Bible, it says that Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. Another question, how do we live a life in Christ that doesn't alienate, but accommodate? And I feel that through a consistent relationship with Jesus Christ, full of prayer, devotion, worship, and fellowship with fellow like-minded Christians. And that doesn't mean that we should stay in the four walls of the church and be confined to these four walls, this institution. Because I think that's what the leaders of the time stood by, the laws, the, the religion, the traditions kept them um, insular. But what Paul is saying that the gospel of Jesus Christ is for everyone, the Jews, the Gentiles. Christ came for the saved and the unsaved. That famous scripture, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Paul's message is one of confidence in God's ability to use us as a vessel to live out the gospel. And note, I say God's ability. Because let's face it, as human beings, sometimes we make decisions and our actions are based and motivated on fear, anger, frustration, hurt, and sometimes pain as well. If we go back to the scriptures, in verse 11, 12, and 13 of Galatians 2, we see Paul challenging Cephas, better known as Simon Peter, one of the disciples. And Paul's issue with Cephas was before he came to Jerusalem, he was breaking bread with the Gentiles and the Gentiles in terms of the law abiders, the Jewish people, they were not circumcised. So they were uncircumcised, um, sorry, and they were not living according to the law. So before um, they came to Jerusalem, Cephas was breaking bread with the Gentiles. They were in the highways and the byways and really preaching the message of Jesus Christ. But when they came to Jerusalem, Cephas kind of separated himself from them because of the fear of the people who were circumcised. But in other words, the people who were living by the law. And in fact, more of Paul's followers were led astray by the hypocrisy, as Paul points out in verse 13. And in conclusion, if we truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if we truly understand why Jesus Christ died and had to be resurrected for the salvation of the world, then let us do all we can to live lives that represent that truth through our faith. And this is what Paul was talking about. It's not necessarily the law, even though the law in the Old Testament paved the way for many things, but because Christ came, there's a new set of um, beliefs that we can abide by, and that is in Jesus Christ and believing in Christ. I understand it's not always going to be easy. We're going to struggle. We're going to have our highs, we're going to have our lows, and sometimes our faith will be tested. I mean, imagine Paul going into Jerusalem and being um, up against these very um, religious, influential and um, intelligent people. So sometimes our faith is going to be tested. And sometimes we may, we may want to fit in because, let's be honest, it's, it's less stressful. But I just want to encourage every one of us today. Let, let's lean into Jesus Christ. Let's trust that God has our best interests at heart. Let's continue to pray and continue to surround ourselves around like-minded people, people who can strengthen us, 
because ultimately that will lead us to hear from God and may result in, like Paul, us having a revelation that can enable us to influence people's lives in a positive way, the way Christ did it, because Christ led and we can have him as an example. If we look at Christ's journey and how he loved people and cared for people and the sacrifice that he made, Christ is saying, be like me. And we can, because we have the spirit in us. Remember that the gospel isn't about rules and regulations and laws and, and being confined to a specific box. I think Paul was saying it's quite opposite, actually. The gospel is about love, freedom in Christ, peace, positive relationships, and connecting with an all-loving, knowing, seeing God whose deepest desire actually is for us to get to know him, for him to get to know us, and for us to lead people in a loving and caring way to get to know Jesus Christ as well. The last thing I want to say is just be encouraged, people. Because it says in the Bible that nothing, and that's nothing, can ever separate us from the love of God. Amen. thousand stories of what they think you're like but I put the tender whispers of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleased and that I, I'm never
big thanks to Dan for sharing his heart on Galatians chapter 2 and for the worship and media team for serving us so well this week. We love you guys. Emojis, big up for you. And next week we've got Paul Wykes uh, back sharing on, you guessed it, Galatians chapter 3. So make sure you come back at 11 o'clock next Sunday for that. Now I'm going to pray now in a second but before we do, if you do want prayer for yourself for any situation that you're facing or for a family member, we have a website mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash pray where you can actually leave your prayer request and we've got a team standing by ready to pray for you we see some incredible answers to prayer so please don't hesitate right after this service to get online and give your prayer requests we promise we'll pray for you i'm going to pray now and then we'll finish and father i just pray right now for everybody watching this service god for whatever their circumstances are right now wherever they are whether they're watching at home at 11 o'clock or they're catching up later after work I just pray, God, that your grace and your peace would be with every single member of the Mosaic family at this time. God, we pray for your favour and your blessing on people. We pray for your light and your life to fill them right now, for your presence to come into their homes, into their circumstances, and for you to meet people exactly where they're at. God, if there's people watching this service that don't know you, I just pray that today they will know the name of Jesus and that the truth of Jesus will set them free. I pray, God, you're stirring people's hearts, a fresh sense of what you're doing in your church at this time, what you're doing in the nations, and there'll be hope for their future. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we'll see you guys next time online.